And I think that really an, an important part of the answer to that is, like we said, start with some use cases where your highest risk resides. Use those as your first rollout. And that way you have end users testing it. You have a limited scope that you're focused on. You get your controls out there. Um, and you know that can be MIP uh, first phase. And then you know when you go to data retention, this is a complex topic. I mean, many clients have 200 different re data retention codes that are all related to finance or whatever their obligations are, contractual obligations. So you need to make sure that you're not deleting things that's critical to the organization when you're doing the remediation. You have to have, it all starts with being able to identify data, do it within a domain, do it in the domain that has the highest risk. Anything to add to that, Mavi? Nope, actually then you covered it all. <laughs> okay, so anonymous. What Microsoft licensing requirements for tools discussed today? So, yeah, I answered uh, that one already um, because what? this is too complex to to share. We have some um, page yeah. for licensing that we created. I think that will cover everything um, because we do have different bundles. So that yeah. depends on the product that you want to deploy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you've got the starter and you've got the full package and lots of different yeah. things out there. So then yeah. uh, Josh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, so then Josh asked, uh, what are some common breaks companies experience if they roll out MIPIN too fast without planning? Oh, <laughs> thanks Josh for asking that question. Well, uh, generally it goes like this. Um, someone very high up in your organization gets an encrypted email they can't read. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? And I don't want this anymore. It breaks my business, right? So those would be a break. Um, you encrypt a bunch of data that needs to move from one department to the other and only one department has access to it and it's locked down. Um, you have important outside legal counsel that you need to send data to and you require users to bundle 40, 40 pieces of data together, change all the labels, change them all to an external confidential label only, and then ship it out. And by the time they're done that, they've, you know, sent, they've opened 10 tickets with you telling you that um, they don't wish you a Merry Christmas or Monica or anything like that. It's, it's, so these are the, Josh, you know, to the answer your question is like, it's about focus. Where is the biggest, I think, aha in all this for me is large volumes of unstructured data were structured and they moved into an unstructured state and it was to do a business process. So if you start messing with that unstructured data, you might break a business process. So that's why you have to have a use case, talk to the end users, understand how they're using it, get them engaged in it and make sure that they say, yes, this is a good product. <laughs> and also what Navi said before, you have the ability to say if it isn't, you have to open a ticket and say, I don't like this. It's not classifying it right. This is how you go through the process of improving your data identity so that you don't have false positives. Yeah, 